We're back. <laughs> We're back. I know I'm not supposed to use contractions in formal speeches, especially because I'm in front of the first lady who happens to be an English teacher. How about that? There's a teacher in the White House. It's an honor to celebrate your achievements, especially over the past two years, which have marked the most challenging period our education, in our education history. The only upside from last year's canceled ceremony is that we get a two-for-one deal this year. <laughs> I'm so glad we're able to do this in person. Before I begin, I want to recognize uh, Chairman Bobby Scott, who's here with us today. Thank you, sir, for your leadership. I also want to acknowledge my colleagues Randy Weingarten, President of the American Federation of Teachers, yeah. Becky Pringle, President of the National Education Association, yeah. and Carissa Moffat Miller, CEO of the Council of Chief State School Officers. Thank you for your tireless dedication to teachers. And representing the states for our 2020 and 2021 National Teachers of the Year, we're also joined by Randy Watson, Woo! Kansas Commissioner of Education, <laughs> and Joan Ebert, Nevada Superintendent of Public Instruction. Thank you for everything you do to support educators in your state. Congratulations again to Juliana and Tabitha, and to all State Teachers of the Year for this well-deserved recognition. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for working to advance educational excellence and equity. You know, Tabitha distinguished herself as an overachiever from a very young age. I heard when she was growing up, regular classroom assignments just weren't enough. She asked for additional enrichment activities to keep herself engaged. In fact, there's a rumor that she also requested to go to summer school <laughs> as a young student. Now as a teacher, Tabitha has brought that love of learning to the classroom. She's an educator after my own heart, teaching our littlest learners in preschool. Thank you, Tabitha, for using your platform as 2020 National Teacher of the Year to promote the importance of early childhood education and social emotional learning. Thank you. I also want to shout out Juliana, our 2021 National Teacher of the Year. <laughs> Juliana is another educator with a passion near to my heart. As a first generation bilingual immigrant, Juliana works to help her students feel proud of their cultures and who they are. She works in special education classrooms and as an elementary school instructional strategist. I'm heartened that Juliana is the first Latina National Teacher of the Year in more than 15 years. Juliana, thank you for using your platform to advocate for a joyful and just education for all students. One that's inclusive, affirming, and celebrates the wonder of learning. As educators, we know that supporting America's students has never been more critical. This is especially true as schools safely reopen for in-person learning and address the impacts of COVID-19 on students' mental health and their social, emotional, and academic well-being. I don't have to tell you, we cannot unlock students' potential unless we also address the holistic needs they bring with them to the classroom every day. Your contributions to our children's success and our nation's future can't be overstated. You are our country's greatest child advocates. And as you know, this is our moment. This is our moment. There's no more important time to represent the profession as teachers of the year than now. As this prestigious program nears its seventh decade, I also want to recognize the Council of Chief State School Officers for shining the light on the importance of excellence in education through your National Teacher of the Year program. 
Thank you, Carissa and CCSSO. Thank you. With each new group of honorees, we pay tribute to the countless dedicated and passionate educators in classrooms across America. Teachers who are pouring their hearts into their work, inspiring their students, and collaborating with their colleagues and neighbors to make their school communities vibrant places to learn. I've always said it shouldn't take a pandemic for us to realize how important teachers are to this country. We know that great teachers are life-changing. They literally shape the lives of those in their reach. If it weren't for the outstanding teachers I had growing up, I wouldn't be standing before you today. Teachers like Gary O'Neill, Linda Ransom, Ronnie Fernandez, and Rob Janiga empowered me. They helped me uncover my passion for education and taught me to never quit. More than anything, they helped me believe in myself. The lasting influence they had on me was immeasurable. I chose a career in education because I wanted to do for students what they did for me. That's the transformative life cycle of teaching. The impact you have extends far beyond your classroom walls. You shape lives. Enjoy the rest of the conference, and I'll see you Thursday at the gala. I hope you brought your dancing shoes. You have two years of dancing to make up for. Have a great, safe, and healthy school year. We're inspired by everything you do, and we have high hopes for your continued success. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the 2020 National Teacher of the Year, Tabitha Rosproy. Let's give Tabitha a loud round of applause. Thank you so much. Dr. Biden, Secretary Cardona, other distinguished guests, <laughs> I want to thank you for the invitation to be here today and the opportunity to speak for all teachers in our country in a time where our voices need to be elevated most. On behalf of the 2020 State Teachers of the Year, <laughs> we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for elevating and for celebrating our work. As the 2020 National Teacher of the Year, I have represented my home state, Kansas, as well as teachers from across the United States and US territories. It's an absolute honor to represent the experiences of my colleagues throughout one of the most challenging times in our history. I have seen educators show up on the front lines of this pandemic, reshaping content delivery in the matter of days, and rallying their communities to support students in virtual learning when there were glaring needs to be met. I have seen them tired, so tired, from the emotional weight of carrying their students' struggles as their own. And I have seen teachers advocate in ways that lift up the voices of their colleagues, their students, and their communities. I teach preschool, as evidenced by my cape. <laughs> I brought the signatures and the artwork of my students, my community, my family, the grandparents at the preschool and the nursing home that I helped to start, all with me to the White House today to share this experience. Preschool has been my focus and my joy for the last 12 years. And as the first preschool teacher to ever receive the prestigious title of National Teacher of the Year, I have dedicated my year to lifting up the importance of making a preschool experience a part of every child's story. Children's brains are developing most rapidly between the ages of zero to five. And we know that if we can reach our students in these early years, we can chart a path to success for years to come. One day in my class, I was reading a beloved children's book, and about two pages in, a student spoke up and said, uh, Mrs. Tabitha, you have a nice voice, but you talk too much. And I was just getting to the best parts, like two pages. And I thought about this story recently after a particularly challenging day at work. I've transitioned into a role as an early childhood coach. And I get to work with the incredible teachers, early childhood teachers in Olathe, Kansas. And I was in a classroom supporting a teacher trying to help her make it through the day, through her lesson plan and everything on her to-do list. 
and we were feeling like we weren't getting a single ounce of cooperation from the room full of 12 three-year-olds. Does anybody have a three-year-old? Okay, now imagine 12. One student was doing somersaults across the carpet. One was refusing to come out from under the table. One was pretending to be the Hulk. And one was cutting up a friend's piece of artwork into tiny pieces with safety scissors. And in that moment of reflection, I realized that my ideas were nice, the teacher's ideas were nice, but we'd been, in the words of my student, talking too much. We'd been trying to make our kids fit into this mold of a predetermined lesson plan when they were trying to tell us what they really needed, whether that be with their words or with their actions. <laughs> our children are crying out for what they really need, and so are our teachers. And as their representatives, it's our job not only to listen, but to act. No longer can our public schools be places where the expectation is that we primarily focus on an academic education. It's nice to get this feedback. <laughs> we, together with families, need to focus deeply on the social emotional support of our students. Whether that's families taking the time to talk to their children at home, lawmakers recognizing that teachers need barriers lifted so that they can do their most important work, or educators collectively lifting their voices for the common good. We must shift our behavior to match our mission. Public schools were founded on the idea of bridging equity gaps in our communities, and there are gaps in our social emotional supports that widen every day that they go unaddressed. A social emotional curriculum is a place to start, but this type of learning has to be a part of the fabric of our schools, our homes, and our communities. I dream of a world where we rally for the needs of our children the way we rally to tailgate at our favorite football teams. Go Chiefs. <laughs> or the way we've all been waiting for Adele's latest album to drop. November 19th, everybody. <laughs> we cannot afford to lose steam. We cannot afford to get distracted from our most important work. I hope we all look back on this time together and we're proud of our collective response. Today we celebrate outstanding educators who even in this moment of personal recognition carry the needs of their students on their backs and the joy of their students in their hearts. Tomorrow we continue the work together. Thank you. Keep it going, keep it going. The 2020 Teacher of the Year whose focus is on social emotional well-being of students. Go figure, huh? <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. I'm excited now to turn the stage over to our 2021 National Teacher of the Year, Juliana Utube. Let's give Juliana a round of applause. <laughs> but it's the emotion and the pride that I hold for what we're doing today. <sighs> what a beautiful day it is to celebrate educators and the transformative power of education. <laughs> On behalf of the 2021 State Ooh. Teachers of the Year, I would like to thank the Biden administration for focusing on educational equity through the American Rescue Plan. A special thank you to Dr. Biden. We are pleased. <laughs> Dr. Biden, we are grateful for your leadership in uplifting our profession in every step that you take. Thank you. Secretary Cardona, agradecemos profundamente Su visión para un futuro de educación pública positiva. Gracias. 
I am so grateful to the strong leadership and mentorship of so many. Thank you to the Nevada delegation, Superintendent Ebert. Thank you for leading by listening to teacher voice. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Thank you to Peggy Brookins and Tanya Holm Sutton for boldly advocating for spaces for teachers of color to shine. I am in awe because each teacher here proudly represents their states and their communities. And we embody the hope and the advocacy needed in our times to forge a new path forward towards an education that ensures all can thrive. Thank you to this amazing cohort of teachers and to all the teachers who firmly hold the belief that education transforms. I believe education now more than ever has the ability to transform. In the face of marginalization, teachers build classrooms that include and encourage all students to learn and grow. We nurture our students' identities at the point of pride. We humanize our students and their families. <laughs> we know that with the right accent, access, all of our students can soar. When we wrap our collective arms around students' identities, we have the ability to build a society that is more joyous and just. Hmm. I, like 75% of my district student population, I'm Latina. I'm Colombiana and proud. I'm proud of my heritage, my roots, and my ancestors' resilience. I'm proud of this story. Today, our focus is to renew the promise of equity and excellence for all children in every school across the country. We know that the pandemic has increased disparities in all walk walks of life, including education. And our work today requires us to collaborate with students and their families, educators and communities, while holding on to hope for a brighter future. This work is often slow, and it's often at odds with the urgency of our times. Let us remember the long-term power and impact of building and sustaining relationships with students, families, and educators so that all of our voices and solutions are in the front lines. In this way, we can create more joy and justice for students like Joseph, who needed an advocate to partner with his family, and Maritza, who needed her, family, uh, her family's home language included at school, or Vanessa and Lila, who needed their family's strengths included in their education so that their confidence could shine. As a special education teacher, my job is to make sure my students see themselves the way I see them, with all their possibilities and abilities to contribute to school communities. As your 2021 National Teacher of the Year, my job is to show the world the incredible power of educators I see each and every day. I stand in an abundance of gratitude for my family, my partner. <laughs> it's Dr. Biden telling me it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Whew. Um, my school communities, Crestwood and the Noes and Booker Elementary, the Council of Chief State Schools Officers for celebrating both the 20 and the 2021 State Teachers of the Year, despite the challenges. And I stand with this immense gratitude for the possibility of a future where all of our students belong, where each child is seen for their strengths and has the ability to live a life full of joy and full of justice and action. I embrace you all and I thank you from the bottom of my corazoncito for being on this journey with me. We have persevered. We have taught through the challenges that seem too big to carry alone. We have remained dedicated to elevating our profession. The road we pave today will lead us to the future. Let's ensure that our future has no barriers, only bridges. Let's ensure that together we enact the biggest lesson that I've learned from my students. And that is, there's nothing more fulfilling than doing our work with joy, and that what we provide to the world is in the spirit of justice. Muchisimas gracias. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> Keep it going. Keep it going. So we have the 2020 Teacher of the Year talking about early childhood education and talking about social emotional well being, holistic needs of the children. We have the 2021 Teacher of the Year talking about inclusivity and cultural competence. All we have to do is listen and act, and we're going to build back better. That's for sure. Thank you, Juliana. Nice job. Now, it's my distinct honor to introduce the most committed champion for educators in the country that I am fortunate to know, who is also a teacher herself, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden. As you know, my husband made a promise to educators across America that his Secretary of Education would be a leader who taught in a public school classroom. And he found that in you. Right, Randy? Right, Becky? Was our promise. Thank you for all that you are doing to support teachers like those who are with us today. And thank you to our National Teachers of the Year for 2020 and 2021. <laughs> Juliana, I was so happy to surprise you last spring when, I, when you were announced. It was so much fun, even though it was 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> and Tabitha, congratulations on being our first ever Early Childhood Education Awardee. So why are you here? I don't mean here on the South Lawn. I mean, why are you here? You're here among, because you are among the finest group of educators in our country. What I mean is, what started you on the path that led you here? Why have you, why did you choose to be a teacher? Why have you dedicated your life to teaching? Everyone here today is here for a reason. Maybe it was a teacher who pushed you to dream that you could make a difference. A child who inspired you to make the world work a little better for her. A time that when you realize that no one was going to do the hard work of changing things if you didn't answer the call. We all have our moment when our story began or a person who set us on this path. For me, it was my grandmother. She taught in an old fashioned one room schoolhouse crammed with three grades of students. And some days when I was a little girl, she would take me with her. And if I was lucky, I got to ring the brass bell, literally, that called her students to class. And she was a great teacher. She loved it. And her students could tell. She didn't just teach letters and arithmetic. She, oh, she like you, opened up new worlds. When she read to us from Charlotte's Web or my favorite Mary Poppins, she was spellbinding. And every child who walked through the, the walls of her classroom became enchanted, including me. I wanted to do that. I wanted to help kids see their world in a different way. 
I wanted to help them find their own voice through writing. I thought if I could do what she did, if I could set just one student on a better path, that would be really special. Someone inspired you too. Someone helped you find your path. And I know that they would be proud to know just how far you've come. The National and State Teachers of the Year program is the most prestigious teacher recognition program in our country. So many teachers were submitted for consideration. And in a crowd of some of the most innovative, talented, compassionate, and effective educators in our country, you, you all stood out. Just, yes. Just look at who is here today. Juliana and Tabitha, you are the inspirations and the innovators. In fact, all of you, all of you represent the best of our profession. And yet, you also represent the small miracles that teachers across this country perform in their classrooms every single day. Seeing the boy who feels like he's fading away and helping him express himself through music or art. Helping the girl who thinks she's not smart enough to find that intelligence that's always been there. Holding that mom's hand when you tell her, despite her fears and stress, that she's doing a great job. Understanding that the words, I'm fine, often means everything is wrong. Through uncertainty and unknowns, through a computer screen or at a distance in the classroom, teachers found new and innovative ways to connect. You met students where they were. You worked long hours. I see the heads, yes, you worked long hours. You reworked those lesson plans, I swear, overnight. And you reimagined what a classroom could be. It was difficult, wasn't it? And we're still wrestling with the challenges of this pandemic. But you and teachers like you across this country have found the courage and the strength to keep going. With all of my heart and on behalf of millions of American families, thank you for being the heroes we need it. I'm going to clap for you. We don't do this job because it's easy. We don't do it because it brings us fame and fortune, that's for sure. We do it because it's more than a job. It's a calling, isn't it? It's part of who we are. And what I want to say to you is this. Never, ever underestimate the power of what you do every day. You know, when my grandmother died, she didn't leave behind a giant estate. But what I inherited from her and what I still have to this day is that simple brass school bell that she used to let me ring. And when I think about that bell, I think about the way her legacy, her love of learning, her patience and compassion resonated into the world like waves of sound, changing those who heard its ring. I think of every student that she taught and wonder what amazing things they grew up to do. Perhaps they are public servants working to make our communities a little stronger or a little fairer. 
Perhaps they are doctors saving lives or architects building our cities or scientists working to solve, solve global challenges. And of course, there's at least one teacher. <laughs> We're all here today because someone, someone took the time who taught us, inspired us, and showed us what we could be. And today, you all ring your own bell, pulling each person you teach into a harmony that never ends. Right now, someone out there is a better thinker because of you. Someone is standing a little taller because you helped her find the confidence she needed. Someone is working a little harder because you pushed him to try. And someone is kinder because you showed her what that meant. Someone is braver because you helped him find his courage. Never stop ringing that bell. Never forget that the lives you change go on to change the world. Student by student, teachers everywhere are performing miracles every day. So thank you for being here. And thank you for coming to the White House. You don't know how much I have looked forward to this day. <laughs> Thank you. Now, there's someone, there's one more person that I want you to speak to today. And that person um, should be coming out momentarily. <laughs> Is he late? My name's Joe Biden, I'm Jill's husband. <laughs> please, please sit down. Please, 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 please. Well, Mr. Secretary, as they say in parts of Claymont I am from, you've done good, fella. As you can see, I didn't get my English lessons from Jill. <laughs> also here is a good friend of mine, a chairman uh, and a congressman, Bobby Scott. Bobby, stand hey, Bobby. up. And Randy, thank you, thank you, thank you. We kept our commitment, didn't we? Yeah, that's what I said. All right. <laughs> and I just want you to know, Becky, uh, uh, you know, Jill is a member of the union. I hope her dues are paid up. <laughs> they are. They are. Okay, I just want to check. I just want to check. There's nowhere we'd rather be than with, uh, with educators. You know, uh, when uh, we decided to run and uh, we got elected, Jill elected me. Uh, <laughs> you all think I'm kidding, huh? Well, uh, what happened was that uh, we, uh, we started thinking about it. And I knew immediately, Jill said, by the way, and I said, it's okay with me, teach full time. She's the only, she's the only first lady who's ever had a full time job. Now, the fact that I don't ever get to see her, the fact that uh, she is either traveling on behalf of the people of this country or going to her classroom teaching uh, 15 credits at the community college is, uh, is a different story. But it is who she is. Like I heard her say, she probably said, I heard her say many times, teaching is not what you all do, it's who you are. It's what you're made of. And you know, uh, one of the things that I used the line years ago that I still think is relevant in a, in a slightly different context. You know, uh, when you think about it, 
the single most consequential people in the world beyond our parents, God willing, if we have them, is our teachers. You are, you are the ones who, you're, you're the kite strings that lift our national ambitions aloft. I mean, not a joke. It's a reality. It's a reality. One of the reasons why we're working so hard and the Secretary is helping so much in the Build Back Better plan is that the rest of the world is starting to figure this out. The rest of the world is starting to out-educate us. Early education is earlier and more prevalent in European countries. A significant number of, we rank number 34 out of 37 industrial nations in the world, and the number of where we rank in terms of people getting a degree beyond high school. And so we have to get back in step, and you're all the reasons. You're, you're the best of the best. You know, for all of it, uh, you know, uh, by the way, where are my two Delaware teachers? <laughs> That's hilarious. Who's Newcastle? Newcastle, all right. You can see we're not at all proud of Delaware. My dad used to always say, never forget where you came from. As they say, them the one that brung me to the dance, you know? But I want to thank Rebecca, I think, uh, for Colonial Education Program in Newcastle. And, uh, and, and Kimberly of McCain High School in Wilmington. That's you, okay, all right. And now, the two national teachers of the year. It's a pretty big deal. I listened to both your speeches, and they're very impressive, and I mean it sincerely. What you do really matters. What you do really matters. And uh, it matters in a way that I think you all don't fully realize. I don't think about, I, I, I'll bet you, you know, I look at every important decision I made in my life. I ask myself, Three things, not a joke. What my, what my dad and mom would think I should do. But when we decided to, I'll just tell you a quick story. When I decided to uh, um, help pick someone who was going to be the nominee for the Democratic Party, I was asked in Delaware to go out and try to find a candidate for the United States Senate. I was 28 years old as part of this group of people. And I kept trying to get people to who were consequential to get involved, and they didn't want to do it. And Nixon was running that year, was going to be a lead pipe since Republicans were going to win, and I was a Democrat. And, uh, and so I showed up at a Democratic convention, an off-year convention, and I went to make sure that everything was uh, going to be okay. And I report that I was the kid at the convention, and it was in Dover, Delaware. And, uh, after the afternoon session, I went back to the hotel, a, a typical hotel, a motel where you drive up, you get out of the car, you walk in the door. And uh, I was in there, I was shaving, and I had a towel around me, and uh, I was in the bathroom, which is like eight by ten, and two beds with the headboards nailed to the wall, and a desk nailed to the wall. And all of a sudden, I hear bam, 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 this banging on my door. And I thought it was a guy, a great friend named Bob Cunningham, and a guy named Dennis. I thought they were coming to pick me up. I thought I was late. So I went to the door, shaving cream, razor in my hand, towel on, opened the door. And who's standing there but the former governor of the state of Delaware? <laughs> swear to God. A former chief justice uh, of the state's Supreme Court and Rhodes Scholar and more members of his family were United States senators than any family in American history. Thirdly, a congressman who had been defeated earlier, a great guy, five-term congressman, and a guy named Henry Topel, who was the uh, state chairman. And they said, we're coming in. I said, <laughs> and I had, met, I had not met two of them personally, two I hadn't met. And I'm in my towel, I mean, I'm in the towel, <laughs> shaving cream on my face. And so I stepped back, I said, oh, oh gentlemen, okay, please, please come in. I went in the bathroom thinking, I'm going to get, put something on. I get in, and I realize there's nothing to put on. <laughs> so I wiped the shaving cream off my face, and I walk out, and I was mortified. 
And I said, I'm sorry, gentlemen. I said, it's okay. And there were two of them, each on the end of each of the two beds that were facing me. And I'm, I'm against the, the, the desk like this. And this guy, Henry Topel, said, and he was from New York, he said, Joe, we just had dinner. We were thinking. And they, you should run for the United States Senate. And I said, oh, geez, what's, you know. I said, well, I said, Mr. Chairman, I said, I'm not old enough. And the then Chief Justice, this retired Chief Justice, of course, said, Joe, obviously you didn't do very well in law school. <laughs> I looked at him. He said, it says you have to be 30 years old to be sworn in, not to be elected. You can be, and you'll turn 30 by the time it's time to be sworn in. And anyway, that was my exposure, no, no pun intended. <laughs> And so I go to the event, and I'm riding home with this guy, Bob Cunningham, who, who was a really bright guy. And I said, Bob, I, I don't know what, what, what in God's name we're going to do. I, this is crazy. And so I'm thinking, who am I going to talk to? True story. And the next morning, I get up and I called my professor at the University of Delaware, a guy named Dr. Ingersoll. And I said, Doctor, can I come down and see you? And he said, of course. I went down and sat with him for a half an hour. I told him what was happening. He just looked at me and said, Joe, remember what Plato said. I'm thinking, what the hell did Plato say? <laughs> but he said, to paraphrase Plato, he said, the penalty good people pay for not being involved in politics is being governed by people worse than themselves. And he looked at me and said, Joe, you should run. I said, but I, I, I'm, I feel strongly about all these issues, but I got involved in the civil rights movement and the war. But I, I, he said, Joe, you should do it. He had enough confidence in me that he gave me confidence in myself. With a kid with no money, coming from a middle-class family, who uh, grew up in grade school stuttering, literally, for me, I'm, I'm confident I would have never done it were not for Dr. Ingersoll. I'm sure there are people of each of you you can look back at, and they changed your life. But most of all, what you do is you give us confidence. You instill confidence. Just like when I was a kid, when I used to stutter badly, the nuns would sit me down and say, Joey, you can do this and practice with me. They gave me confidence. And so, folks, you know, as Jill always says, teaching is not who you, well, what you do. It's who you are. And it also is, like, let me conclude by saying this about something that uh, – as a strong proponent of education. I, be I became friends, and Jill as well, but I became friends with Colin Powell, who we just lost. Think of where Colin Powell is, not only a dear friend and a patriot, one of our great military leaders and a man of overwhelming decency. This is a guy born son of immigrants in New York City, raised in Harlem in the South Bronx, graduated from C C City College in New York. And he rose to the highest ranks, not only in the military, but also in, in areas of foreign policy and statecraft. This is a guy, and we talk about it, who had teachers who looked at this African-American kid and said, you can do anything. So all I want to say to you, really, is don't underestimate. Don't underestimate what you do. The good news about you all is you underestimate it, so you come off in a way that you don't feel self-important. But you're gigantic. You make a gigantic difference. And I learned that when uh, Jill and I would walk through the malls on Christmas time, when I was a senator, and kids would go, hey, 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 and I'd wave. <laughs> and they'd say, no, 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 Dr. Biden. Doctor, <laughs> swear to God. So, folks, thank you for what you do. I really mean it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, now I've got a few little gifts to give here. This is for Tabitha. Tabitha, can you come up here? I don't want to drop this. Do you want to hand it to me? No, you. Me neither. <laughs> Tabitha, this is for 2020. 2020, I know, but this is this apple is worth $280,000. No, I can no, retire. Uh, I'm, I'm joking, but I want you to have this and tell her. You let you know how much we appreciate you and all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm not sure if it's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be really good. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
All right. And this is Julianas. Julianas, come on up here. Julianas, I had a great friend uh, who was a former senator from Texas and looked at me one day. He's passed away now, and he said, Joe, you'll never get elected president unless you can learn to speak Spanish. Perfect. Well, guess what? I decided to hire everybody who spoke Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations. It's a great honor, and I'm delighted to